In another video, we've covered the mechanics of computing the variance and standard deviation of a set of data. Here, I want to give an idea of what the variance and standard deviation can tell us about data. Now, I've set up two extreme data sets here. Uh, we can calculate and see that they have the same average, the same mean. Now, how would we do that? Well, you see this first data set here has 10 values that are 5 each. So if we uh, multiply 10 times 5, we get 50. And we have 5 values, which are 0 each. So that contributes 0. And so the mean over here is just going to be the 50 over 10 or uh, 5. Okay. And what about this data set? Well, this has 10 values, each of which are 5. So, and there's uh, 10 points, and so again, the mean of this is just going to be 50 over 10 or, or 5. So, these two data sets have exactly the same average. So, to take a look at uh, the difference, let's look at uh, the histogram here. So, if I just quickly sketch a histogram for this, well, let's see, I guess I should have started and... Uh, uh, and an x-axis. All right, so let's see. So the values of this are either going to be 0, or here's a 5, and here's a 10. And what are the values? So there's going to be 5 values up here. I'll let that work. 5, and then over here is 5. It's like that. Okay, so this is data set 1. What about data set 2? All right, so here's my axis again. Here's a 0. Try to get the scale the same, it be impossible. And now what about this? There's 10 values that are going to be, so that's maybe going to be, should be twice the height of what I had the other on the other side. So this is the way uh, these two histograms look. Now, from looking at this visually, we can see some things about the, the data sets. Now, for example, uh, this data set over here has a larger spread. Right? Uh, this data over here is more consistent. All right, so how other ways would we describe this? Well, if um, this data is sort of more stable, if you were looking at some quality uh, quality control uh, we would like the you know the average to already come out this way so this is more stable I guess I should say more stable or just stable what if these represented uh, financial uh, payoffs for example uh, here we would have something where say for example the payoff would be five million dollars or something it would be uh, in all cases so the probability of this would be certain so this is uh, some certainty over here and what about this supposing so each of these 50 percent is you'd get supposing you get a 50 percent chance the payoff would be 10 million and a 50 percent chance the payoff would be zero uh, so you would say that if you were going to compare that with the one over here that was certain you'd say that this had involved more risk. So this is more risk. Okay, so what we see is that a larger uh, spread of the data uh, is associated with more risk. A uh, smaller spread of the data is associated with more certainty, more consistency. Now, how do we uh, quantitatively try to, to measure this? Well, so let me go up, get a color here. Uh, so in, here is the mean in both cases. Now, the way you can measure this spread is to look at how much deviation there is from the mean. So between uh, 5 and 0, well, if I took the data point minus the mean, that's going to be minus 5. Over here, plus 5 will be the amount of deviation between the mean and the uh, the other data points. Here, the deviation is just zero in every place. Now, we could just kind of average the deviations, 
but you see there's a problem with that because here there's going to be five values that was negative five and five values that plus positive five so if we average them up we'd get zero and that's no good so what we do is we want to square the deviations so the idea of this is we want to uh, average intuitively the squares of the deviations all right so let's go through and see what that does for each of these data and that's called the variance all right and so what will we do here well we see that there were five uh, points where we were on the low side here so we would take a zero minus five square that and then there were five points in this extreme case where we were uh, going to be uh, five units above it so uh, uh, this is pretty easy to oh well, what's that we were going to average it well okay I with 10 points all together so what does this come out to be well see this is like 25 and another 25 here so it's going to be 10 times 25 250 over uh, and so the variance is 25 in this case and of course in this case there's almost nothing to compute because what are we doing here the deviation in each case is zero so if we look at the values minus the mean and square that we get this big zero so it doesn't matter how many times we take it and you know but if we do the average here so this comes out to be zero which is associated with the fact so that uh, this is a very stable more certainty now if we were talking about the, these values along on the x-axis were money or uh, miles or something like that, remember we had to square these things. So these are going to be square units, units squared. And so we normally would like to talk about the variation in the same set of units as we had uh, on the x-axis. So that's where we introduced the standard deviation. And so the standard deviation, you call S or sigma, would be the square root of the variance. So in this case, it works out nice. Square root of 25 is back to 5. And of course, in this case, the standard deviation, square root of 0, is 0. All right. So now if we look at these two values, we can see that, in fact, uh, this value is much larger than this, which is associated with the fact that we could look at this and, and see how this spread out here is much more spread out than it was in this case. Now, I have taken some liberties here. For example, uh, if this is a population, we can actually find the average this way. If, in fact, this was a sample of something, then statisticians would really want to take this denominator here and modify it a bit and they would divide by one minus the number of data points but intuitively the idea is that you want to just find the average of the the sum of the squares of the deviations and that's going to give you the variance all right uh, see you in another video